Hello and welcome back and today we're going to continue looking at applications for NAS. So we want to take another look at an ASA store application today and today it's the turn of the download manager AI download from ASA store and this is available to be used on pretty much oh, I would say actually every single ASA store NAS. So we're utilizing the brand new locker store 4 uh, but today's video applies to pretty much any locker store NAS that you want to use for downloading files. Um, this application is available completely for free for iOS and Android allows you to download RSS feeds, um, FTP, BT, NZB, all the different kinds of download protocol. Before we go any further, let's get a few things straight out of the way of any video that's about downloading files from the internet. Please, please, please be safe. Be sensible and be legal, everyone. This video is not about helping you download the next Avengers film on the hooky. It's about showing you how to download files with convenience and ease. Whatever you're going to do with today's video, please just try to keep it on the straight and narrow because it will be your fault if you go you know, outside of the lines and do something dodgy. But let's get straight into it. The application's pretty straightforward. You've got the pass lock there at the top. Information about the application if you want it. Uh, there's little bits of bobs of information there and finding an as on your environment can be found either with an internet level link an IP or localized address, that means the NAS is in the same network, um, or dare I say it, internet, bit caveman there, environment, or auto discovery where it will just scan it. So you can enter it manually or find it on your network. If we make our way into the NAS here, we can have a look at the options. Now, if you've got an existing download queue, queue this is where those options will be. And we will be doing some downloading today to show you guys exactly how it's done and you know if this app is straightforward or difficult. But the search functionality is quite straightforward. You can see there I've already committed a search with the word news. Heading into some of those options, we can see that there is a varied selection of results. But quite frankly, a lot of them I am definitely not going to be playing on YouTube today because they're fairly dodgy. But it is worth saying that if you do use that search functionality, you can go through some of the seeding options, the peer options, size, smallest, oldest, etc, etc. But it has to be said that this search functionality, I question its legality, just the tiniest bit, the source uh, website here. So it would be interesting to see if there are other sources that can be added. So if we make our way back towards the main menu, we can have a look at the existing downloads. And of course, we haven't added any of those. So the next thing we want to do is have a look at um, adding RSS feeds and adding customized download links. Now, in order to do this, I am going to be taking advantage of a couple of different websites. So if we go back to the main headings there, if we go into Chrome on my phone here, we can see that I've got the Internet Archive open. The Internet Archive is one of the largest resources of material anywhere on the Internet. But moreover, it has lots and lots of free and legal torrents. If we go in there and we look for that same word, we look for the same word news. Make our way into the search results. We're not going to go into too much details. We're just going to select any old news file there, we're going to open that up there. And what we want to see is a download file. So we've got the torrent file there. And we can either keep the torrent file itself, which is what we've downloaded there. Or I can copy the link address. As you see, we've now downloaded a torrent there. If we make our way back into the application, we can either upload that torrent file that we've just downloaded quite straightforwardly and easily. Or we can add that URL that we've just created there, paste in that file, say the directory you want it to go into, in this case the download folder, click the tick, and if we go into those settings, we can have a look at the files in the background. As you can see, because it's a vid uh, it's just a photo file, it's downloaded that file very quickly indeed. But what about if we go for something bigger? Let's go for perhaps a video file. Let's go for something a um, little bit larger. Let's go for multimedia so let's go for maybe a video file that's quite large in size so if we make our way into the filters here we're going to media type we want it to be a movie so we want something quite large there we'll let the filter take it to do its thing so now we're going to select one of these news files here so we're going to go with this whatever this is and once again we'll go to the torrent files I'm going to hold that button there to download it, copy the link address. It's downloaded that torrent file as well, but we don't really need to do that. Make our way back into AI download. Click the plus symbol at the top, and now we can enter that URL there. And again, we can click the tick, and now add that download file. So we go into the downloads, 
you can see there that it's got those files there in the background doing their thing. And of course they're finished as well, so we can click play and they're done. So coming out of that application, the next thing we want to do is try to download for the RSS feed. So if we make our way in to any podcast, most podcasts have an RSS feed, and this is a great way for you to be able to download uh, podcasts regularly to your NAS system, which you can then retrieve on your uh, mobile, you know, to listen to on the go whenever you need, and you can have a constantly renewing amount of those. So for now, for example, here you see view XML feed and that little icon, very, very important to look for that orange icon. Right now I'm gonna use the Bugle podcast, but you will find that most podcasts have an RSS feed. We're just gonna right click or hold the button down. We're gonna copy that link address. Then we're gonna head back into the AI download program. Open it up. From there, we're now gonna enter add an RSS feed, which we've done there. And then we can double check that RSS feed any length of time that we want. So for now, we're gonna click plus and it's now going to check our RSS feed. So we go to the downloads and now it will add that RSS feed to our available searches. So we can search that Bugle podcast. And as you see there, all of the episodes of that podcast and that list will be refreshed every time you scroll to the bottom. And then you can go ahead and either download one or multiple files quite easily. You just click them and then you can just say, I want to download that file. It's that straightforward to add them. And that's about it really with regard to this application. It has to be said that there isn't a vast amount more to it than that. It's quite a light application. You can change a lot of the background preferences of number of downloads that you've got there. Do the files uh, or at least the uh, build up files get deleted upon completion of a download. You can add restrictions really. And of course push notifications that can go to your mobile device to let you know when downloads are done. But what I will say that it's a little bit of an underwhelming tool overall. Um, it's not the smoothest run. I'm not 100% certain about some of those results there as well. I would query those somewhat. And then of course, things do seem a little bit sluggish there on in terms of the UI when you're actioning some of these files overall. But it has to be said, that if you do have an Asus or NAS, this is a very, very convenient way for you to conduct your downloads. I just think maybe the app needs a little bit more work overall to get it up to the standard that we've seen before in other applications. Some of the other applications we've talked about from Asus Store so far have been very, very flush, but I do think this one could stand to get a little bit more of a bit of polish there on the background. But I'm gonna wrap things up here. Thank you so much for watching. Click like if you've enjoyed the video. Click subscribe to learn more about Asus Store applications. And I think we've got a couple more of these to go before we start talking about desktop apps as well. Thank you so much for watching. Click like uh, and subscribe as said. Go into the description and find those links if you find them useful. Let me know. And otherwise, I'll see you next time.